This week seven NFL picks edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by MyBookie.ag. Winning season continues at MyBookie, and they're now offering a free twenty dollars bet with the promo code SGP twenty. That's MyBookie.ag promo code SGP twenty to get a free twenty dollars bet with your first deposit. We're also brought to you by Thrive Fantasy. Thrive Fantasy is a new daily fantasy sports app built specifically for player props. Download the app in the App Store and use the promo code SGP for an instant deposit match up to fifty dollars. That's ThriveFantasy.com promo code SGP. Sign up and prop up today. We're also brought to you by Ace for Head. Ace is the leader in pay per head providers, and they make it super easy to start your own sportsbook. Plus, Ace is offering up to six weeks free over at AceForHead.com slash SGP. That's AceForHead.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by Sean Green. Pre-order my latest comedy album. This loss hurts us all. For only three ninety nine. That's right, only three ninety nine for a limited time. Just head to sportsgamblingpodcast dot com slash Sean. That's sportsgamblingpodcast dot com slash Sean. Ooh, welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner in picks, right? Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Well, it's Giants Eagles week. It is. Big game, big game, huge game. Not huge a not a Thursday lot of, night game. Not a lot of games this week will have a division on the line. Kind of uh, interesting stat already. The Washington Redskins are both one pick away from be leading the division, yep. and one win away from having the number one pick, or uh, one loss away from yep. having the number one pick overall. So, a lot of range in the NFC East, and I saw someone. Uh, tweeted out the ultimate chaos theory in the NFC East. And it was a situation where the Giants, Cowboys, and Redskins all tie for first at four and twelve. The Eagles are behind them at three eleven and one, and the Giants win the division at four and twelve. That's actually that's a scenario w- that's in place. So that's the worst that that's the worst possible scenario for yes. me. Maximum like lowest- wins and and overall wins for the division. <laughs> That's impressive. Well, I, I do think four would be the ceiling for this Giants team, Ryan. Well, but what are you basing that on? I'm ba- I'm basing it on just watching this team so far. I'm I'm not optimistic. A lot of games on- to play, and unlike whatever is going on down there in Dallas, you know what the beat writers are re- are responding oh, to the so Dallas good. news with? What's that? Not a problem here. <laughs> no problems like that here. Preparation is not the problem in this building. Wow. Well, so uh, if I'm a Dallas fan, I don't know how I'm feeling right now. I think I probably want McCarthy to be fired right now. And, and I think, but we, he's going to get a pass. We talked about on the DFS podcast with uh, John Jackson. He threw out Mike McCarthy mm-hmm. next coach fired yeah. at 250 to one. Oh my God. <laughs> now Jerry Jones, not afraid to spend <laughs> some money, but that would be kind of insane. How bad do they let this team go? But maybe, but maybe ultimately the dark horse candidate for the Trevor Lawrence sweepstake, the Cowboys just tank the rest of the season. Now they draft Trevor Lawrence number one overall, and then they don't even have to worry about the DAC contract. Well, you're you're taking that to a fun place, but you're doing it wrong. What's that? Justin Fields, Urban Ooh. Meyer, head coach. Oh yeah, Bring- Justin Fields, quarterback. You're right. That's that's a Jerry Jones move. Urban I, Meyer it would probably not coming out of retirement unless Tim Tebow's in the <laughs> in part of the deal. He's and the team chaplain. I could see one of the teams. I could see Urban doing, Meyer doing some jump passing with the holy water coming out of retirement and, and going to do is coaching the Cowboys with like a ten million dollar a year deal. Something Jerry Jones would do. Imagine, uh, imagine being Jerry Jones and uh, how much money did he give Mike McCarthy? Oh my God. The guaranteed money. I, you can, it doesn't really matter because there's no salary cap for coaches, but it matters just from being horrifically embarrassed. Uh, yeah, I mean, like everyone's it, talking about gaining 10, 15 pounds during COVID. <laughs> Jerry Jones picked up like 60 mil in debt. I mean, there's a oh, real. You're going to say 360 pounds of dead weight in Mike McCarthy. Uh, oh, he's. Fuck you if he's less than 400 pounds. Like, let's be he's real. He's a big man. I've not seen much like. Uh, you, like a nice big full breast fills out a, a cup of a bra. I've not seen a face fill out a, a, a COVID mask like Mike McCarthy. <laughs> the the COVID mask. He's straps, a D cup face. They're just hanging on to their life. <laughs> He's got double D face. <laughs> <laughs> That's the D's. Oh shit! Down in Dallas. On fire. Just feels so good to throw the Cowboys in the trash. You know what else feels good, Ryan? 
to give away cold, hard cash and merch with the free roll football contest presented by Betsverts. Let's take a look at the week six leaderboard. Chaos is ensuing. Sean, the lawyer, the lawyers are telling us we have to put a stop to this. We have to limit how many people can really poor planning on our part. Uh, This is a free roll week six in the free roll football contest. We have a crazy seven way tie for first and I'm going to shout out to the bet spurts guys for including the eighth place finisher because it's one of our favorites. Oh, OG Sopa P. If you don't tune into the pregame periscope Sunday morning, all he does is throw out stone cold locks in the prop department. Well, he was nine and five, nine picks. Correct. That was good enough for a tied for set tied for first methodical spelled M E methodical with 10 also tied with 10 eraser. One Oh one Chris Kane, Ben Benner Ben. Dun- yeah. Ben Arcone. I would guess double down 61. And the guy who took over the lead from one from Walgreens gambling engineer. He got a week. And then of course, Sean, it would only be the year of the square. <laughs> if cousin mush himself oh took down God. a week in the free roll baby fucking wheel, man. football contest. So Shut congratulations. Up. Yeah. Congrats to cousin mush and all the winners. And uh, yeah, hit us up podcast at sports gambling podcast.com to claim your merch prize. That's email us podcast at sports gambling podcast.com. How about the season long leader? Well, I, kinda, I buried the lead, but let's just do a top three today uh, in third place. It's dubs with 54 correct picks in second place, dropping down from his perch one from Walgreens one step closer to the locker and then first as I mentioned, he won last. He tied. Uh, he got a share of the week six crown. He is in first place overall. Maybe she gambling engineer with fifty six correct picks. Now I know a lot of squares in our contest. I Sean. know one from Raw Greens is probably a huge fan of the show, but I am rooting against this guy just because he went with well, I, and maybe he really liked the story. Thought it was funny, so I'm sure he is a fan. Um, but yeah, I. A couple other highlights. Uh, Dejins, I, can't, I can't be rooting for him. To Dejins, win. Darren, uh, he's still up there, tied for fourth. Uh, Sean, you are still up there, wow, tied of course. for seventh, with fifty-two correct, only four back of the lead. So I'm going to take it down. Fuck everyone. I'm going to win. I'm going to win the prize. Kramer, we're coming off a uh, strong week. You were nine and five against the spread. I was eight and six. We both hit our teases, our three team teases. Wow, that's three good. weeks in a row, we've hit our three team teases. <laughs> I hit my lock, and again, we dominating. Uh, coming off a of four and one week in the Circa and the Capra Cup. Of course, we're still in first place by a point and a half in the Odds Shark Capra Cup. It's a point a, and a half? Yes, sir. Oh my God! It's been a great a time. separation. Moving day, and of course, and Sean, really quick though, they could actually copy our picks. Yes. Because we release ours for free well before the deadline. Well before the deadline. Giving out all the free against the spread picks with some of the best lines in the industry over at mybookie.ag. Use that promo code SGP20. Get in over at mybookie.ag. So much, uh, so much gambling action now with the World Series going on. Ton of fun player props. Of course, golf. We got the golf gambling podcast. That thing's popping off. UFC 254, the about that action guys on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network feed. They got you covered there with UFC 254 picks. Maybe even a fight show, Ryan. It's coming up. Who knows? All I know is that if you want to gamble, and you most certainly do, that's why you're listening to the podcast, you got to do it over at mybookie.ag. Use that promo code SGP20, get a free $20 bet only on a $45 deposit. When you go over to mybookie.ag, you play, win, and most importantly, get paid. Yeah, I, I'm Sean. You didn't talk about the survivor, I don't think. But well, we're surviving. That's all surviving. they need to know. 353 out of 1,390 remain. So it's 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 beginning to to feel a bit more real, Sean. Look a bit out, more real. Is it time? It's time. Let's it's, start doing it. It's already time. Week seven picks. Come on. Thursday night football. Uh, don't know why they had to schedule this on a Thursday. <laughs> the Giants head to Philly, where Philly fans are still trash. 
They were seven on the look ahead, Sean. This yeah. dropped all the way to three and a half. I locked it in at three and a half. It's I'm like, now, this this line's not gonna, never going to get to three. It's it, that's true. It's now down. It's back to four and a half. A little rebound. Minus two twenty on the money line for the Eagles. Plus one eighty for the Giants. Forty five is the total. Um, I mean, if you want to go first and tell me all the reasons why this this walking band of zombies. Uh, and and led by their leader Carson Wentz is well, going to be able to I get mean, done I don't, again. I don't know if pull you a horseshoe call- out of their ass again to almost win a game. Is that some sort of? Uh, I mean, Ryan, we may have to talk to Human Resources if you're referring to my man Travis Fulgham, which no one can pronounce this man's right name right. I've listened to every single podcast. Fulg- Fulgham, right? Fulgham. Fulgham. Yes. Fulgham. Everyone mispronounces this guy's name wrong. He's from Old Dominion. He is he is a legit number one receiver. Oh, to you if you're from the area. This is an insane seven stat. five seven shout out. Uh, he was promoted from the practice squad two weeks ago. Again, Howie Roseman didn't draft him. That's how you know he's a good receiver. <laughs> he has more receiving touchdowns than the Eagles' last six wide receiver draft picks combined. Are you kidding me? In and fairness, Rager looks like he could be a player. Rager and Rager does. He's going to be eligible. I don't know why I'm defending you. He's eligible and got her eligible to return this week. I, I don't think they're quite there yet. But you know who is there? Deshaun Jackson, mm-hmm. legendary Giants killer. Thank the Lord, Alshon won't be active. Alshon won't be active, but Fulgham's playing the X. I like him there. Lane Johnson. There was some concern the Lane train wouldn't be there. Lane train is gonna yeah. be guarding Carson Wentz on the right side and. Another surprise, uh, nice little piece here. Avante Maddox, second cornerback, will be back on the outside. That just helps. Jalen Mills doesn't have to slide over. Nikhil Roby Coleman doesn't have to slide over. I think the Eagles are going to have a tremendous pass rush against this Giants offensive line that's Could be. struggled with protection. Andrew Thomas kind of been a disaster so far. Josh Sweat, Brandon Graham should have big games. Of course, the Eagles they will be rocking the Midnight Blacks you six like and zero. Oh. Against the Giants, uh, wearing the midnight blacks. Of course, six and zero is a good number. Could Giants have covered the last six? Eleven in, in Philly. Eleven and one against the Giants. Last twelve. Seven are and we, one in the Doug the or Twenty-one and three. The last twenty-four. Oh, oh, I see. You're talking straight up. We're not because yes. good teams uh, win. Great teams cover. Sean wow. and the Giants have covered the last six in the link. The <laughs> so last they're six. Due, they're due for a mistake here. Really? If you want to use that logic, the Giants are due for a win. No, they're due for a cover because they they can't. This the Giants team can't come in and win this game. I mean, they were doing backflips against the Redskins after a one point win, which I mean, Ron Rivera, Riverboat Ron, that Riverboat just went off a cliff. I don't know, I, some sort of uh, waterfall he didn't see coming. Someone uh, fucking that asshole Daniel Snyder started <laughs> referring to him as analytical rod. He's I'll show you, motherfucker. Gonna bring the Riverboat back, but really. And on the Dire Eagles podcast, we we cover this game in great detail with special guest Ryan Real Money Kramer. You can get oh, wow. that on the Sports Thank Gambling you. Podcast Network feed. The Eagles released Jamon Brown. Now Jamon Brown was a guard for the Eagles for one game. They're calling it the worst career in Philadelphia Eagles history. One game, disaster of a game. Let up three sacks personally. Was he the guy that was uh, shaking hands with with uh, the he, enemy? He was posing for a photo with Lamar Jackson after the game. And if you recall last year, what really jump started the team on that nice four and zero run to close it out, win the division, was Orlando Scandrick bad mouthing the team and them cutting Orlando Scandrick. I think the releasing of Javon Brown could be a similar. Mm. Rallying cry, give this team a little bit of uh, that might be a big story bit of juice. in this in the circles you you run in, but maybe maybe not me. Yeah, I mean I called this out on the Die Hard Eagles podcast. Lamar Jackson just shredded your boys. Daniel Jones, second fastest quarterback in the NFL according to Next Gen Stats, hitting a top speed of over <laughs> twenty miles an hour. <laughs> He's starting to run the ball more. I think they figured last week he went for 74. He he's looked good running the ball. And I think you don't have to protect him. Let him use his legs. It's the benefit. Uh, it's one benefit. He br- maybe it's his greatest weapon at this point. So I, I think when you look at the way the Eagles have defended the mobile quarterback specifically last week, that would be an angle that I would be a little nervous if I was an Eagles fan on the other side of the ball, the offensive line. I mean, you, you haven't, you spoke about, you spoke poorly about the giants offensive line. Yeah. Uh, Thomas has not been uh, has not been great. Uh, Pert. Why did he get Why did he get suspended? 
Uh, not, so, so. not showing up at meetings on time. Uh, listen, Joe Judge, it all rise. Either either you're you're adopting the the late framework for a team meeting of and, the program, or you're he, not. And, uh, and late, you know, the last guy to be finding people for fucking team meetings, he won two Super Bowls. Thank you very much, <laughs> Tom Coughlin. Welcome back anytime he wants. I think everything you said about the Giants' offensive line, same holds true for the Eagles. Mm-hmm. And the Giants are getting home ninth in the NFL in sacks this year with fifteen. Say what you will. I don't love that the number came down from seven. Wish I had a piece of that seven. But I'm gonna take the Giants with the points. All Joe he sees something here. He sees an opportunity. And the last thing I'll leave you with, you may not have heard, we shit on the Cowboys for the first five minutes of the show. Yes. One of the big things to take out of this was basically the players were saying that the coaches are comically unprepared, which is a total millennial move on one hand, Cowboys. But on the other hand, they are comparing this to Jason Garrett, which tells me Jason Garrett is going to be prepared for this game. <laughs> Jason Garrett's going to have Daniel Jones prepared for this game. And when when Daniel Jones maybe a DGen prop is needed for Daniel Jones for the rush for 100 yards and score a touchdown, but when that happens, the Giants oh will be winning this God. game straight up. And I will be taking down the Thrive Fantasy. Yeah, and uh, good reminder there, Thrive Fantasy, shout out to Thrive Fantasy, a new Daily Fantasy Sports app. They're doing a special promotion just for our listeners. It's pretty awesome. They're giving away thousand dollars in a free roll. Again, completely free. You can enter the contest twice. Again, sign up over at thrivefantasy.com uh, or download the app. Use the promo code SGP. Get a nice instant deposit match up to fifty dollars, and then you'll see a special uh, one. It says SGP Thursday Night Football. It's just Eagles Giants player props. And again, they're giving away a thousand bucks. You can get two entries in. I don't know why you wouldn't do this. Again, completely free, no obligation, and uh, you're just going up against other SGP listeners. They will ask you for a code to enter the uh, enter the game. And some people have had some problems with it. Yes. Make sure you click on the right contest. Click on the right contest. <laughs> enter the code DGen, and you'll be good to go. If you have any issues, hit us up on Twitter at Gambling Podcast. Oh, well, you know, good news. You right if you sign up right now, you would only be competing against 92 other entries. 92. Yeah, and again, you get two entries. So, two entries against 92. Wait, and repeat that. How much how much did that cost? Completely free. Right, okay. And a thousand bucks. I mean, Jesus Christ. I, I haven't looked at the prize. You could win sure. twice. Cuz you have two entries. You could win twice, Sean. Let's do For, it. First place in the the Circa Millions uh, is held Top three spots are held by one guy. That's insane. Buffalo Sunday on in the early window. Buffalo coming off the Monday night loss to the Chiefs. They head to New York, Sean, to take on the Jets, who are in a bit of a sandwich spot between two games with the Dolphins. <laughs> Buffalo was ten and a half on the look ahead. It's all the way up to thirteen and a half, minus seven hundred on the money line, plus five hundred for the Jets. Fifty one is the total. I said to you before we started recording that this felt like a a pivotal week in the sharp versus square world because there are so many games where conventional wisdom will tell you conventional gambling will, uh, wisdom will tell you to go the other way. It's time to zig. Be contrarian to the very public sides. In this case, Bills getting ninety seven percent of the tickets, ninety three percent of the money. Bills in a in a w- what we would call I think a look ahead spot with New England on deck. Yeah, and if th- there was ever a time to take the Jets, Sam Darnold could be back. Uh, Gase had a sit down with Chris Herndon to talk about uh, taking things one week at a time. <laughs> well, and and I think I could maybe be talked into taking the Jets if Buffalo wasn't coming off back to back losses. Like this Buffalo team needs this game. They need this game to get back in that division or to really stay, stay locked in as, as leaders in the division, they can't afford to look past this jets team. I think Sean McDermott is a good coach back-to-back losses. I think will be a wake up call for this team and Josh Allen against this jets defense. I think he's going to make some plays the, the jets are zero and six, but they're also zero and six against the spread. That feels like they're about, they're going to cover one of these games, but Adam Gase, man, they haven't been within one possession of a of a win this season. Adam Gase, thirty one losses by double digits, which is crazy when you compare the fact that he has thirty only thirty career wins. So he's had more uh, double digit losses than wins. They're clearly running out the clock on the season. 
I'd be surprised if you put Darnold in here. I mean, if he's close, why wouldn't you not just sit him out one more week? But ha- all right. I mean, I, I I don't have a good argument for why you take the Jets. Um, sounds like Mims could be back as well. Uh, Perryman looked all right. Like Rashad Perryman actually looks like he could be someone that contributes. Jamison Crowder popped up on the injury report. Uh, Jesus, as limited. That would be concerning to me. He's been getting ten double digit targets every week. I just. I'm with you. I I think what you, it sounds like you're taking Buffalo. Yes. I'm all over Buffalo. I mean, if it was over four, but I just, I can't pick this jets team. I physically cannot click that button. Isn't this one of the trends where we just, when we're wrong, we, we lay it, we back off, but until we're wrong, we just keep riding. I mean the same thing with Seattle. We kept riding that hot hand. We got, we got caught with our hand in the cookie jar against Minnesota, but we still had that nice four and run. I, I like taking the Bills overall this season, but really, it's just about fading the Jets. So you just n- have to fade. So the just Jets. to recap, you're not worried about the short rest. No, you're not worried about fading a home divisional dog. You're not worried about the massive jump off the look ahead, actually crossing a key number up all the way up at these numbers, and you're not worried about the fact that Buffalo could be looking ahead to New England. No. I mean, I guess I'm and you're not are, worried about the sandwich spot between Kansas city and New England. <laughs> no, I mean, are you taking the jets? No, I agree with you. Oh, I'm okay. just this when I, before that's this, how you would build the case. But, and again, but, but that's everything though. Like the, the case is for the jets this week. You just, the case against the jet jets is Adam Gase. But also in this COVID season, these, these data heads and whatever the home dog has lost some of the value because there's no home field. Like maybe if MetLife stadium actually was filled with However many Jets fans they could get to the game, maybe that would give this team a little bit of juice, a little bit of umph. But come on, I mean, they're what are they playing for? The, this team realizes they're an embarrassment. I, I just don't see them getting up for this game. Again, if the receivers all play and maybe the Bills secondary really sucks, but I, I'm with you. I think you have to lay these points. Next up, Carolina heads to New Orleans. New Orleans coming off the bye. Sean teams coming off the bye are four and two uh, straight up and against the spread this year. So far, new Orleans seven on the look ahead. They are seven actively a uh, little bit of juice. Minus one fifteen on the seven minus three forty five on the money line, Carolina plus two eighty five. Fifty one is the total. I, I go ahead. I, I feel like the first thing we say here is this, this is maybe the first game we throw into the potential for survivor pool. Um, but but the big thing is just purely the saints have not been a good home team two and six against the spread. The saints have not been good against the Panthers one and four against the spread. Yeah. Well that's, that's against the spread. And I think there's more of a case for that. If you're talking survivor, I like new Orleans coming off a of buy. I like Sean Payton coming off a of buy. And we've seen this year in year out in the same reason we were fading new Orleans early uh, because new Orleans every year, they kind of get off to a slow start and now they're getting healthy. They're getting some of their defensive line back. That'll help with the pass rush. Lattimore, who uh, you know had been good previously coming into the season, he struggled a little bit. But to get back Janoris Jenkins, that's going to help take the pressure off him. Michael Thomas, who again kind of in this weird state, uh, he was practicing but then kind of left abruptly. Who knows? But I think he will be back and will be playing. I think this Carolina team, and we mentioned it as an angle for why you would play David Montgomery last week in fantasy. Not quite uh, as big of a breakout, but Carolina struggles with the pass catching running back. I think they're going to have their hands full with Alvin Kamara. I, I do like Matt Rule as a coach, and again, I got this Carolina team seven to nine. So I think this is a game they lose. I think it's a game New Orleans covers. And if you just need one little bit of X factor, the Panthers put their kicker on the COVID nineteen list uh, right now. The facility. Joey Sly? I, I don't know his name. I forgot to write it down. He's a Virginia Tech guy. No wonder why he got COVID. But uh, be rampant yeah, they there. got they got a bad case of the COVID. I mean, maybe Robbie Anderson has a couple of big plays. McCaffrey looks like he's still going to be out. Uh, Davis had that bad fumble. You I want I, a little nugget. Sure. Carolina is one of the best teams in limiting teams. Uh, uh, I think it's yards per attempt, like six point one. Yeah. And guess what? Check down Drew Brees. Doesn't 5. matter. 9. Yeah, he doesn't need he doesn't need yards per attempt. They can win by just checking down the entire game and getting it to uh, Alvin Kamara out of the backfield. So I, I think I, he, I like New Orleans minus seven. I also am on the chalk here. Uh, although Carolina has played them well in the past, I think that's a it's a different team. Obviously, 
And I think when you look at Peyton off the bye, this team has not been great. The early bye certainly helped them, I think, more than most. Again, four and two teams coming off the bye, four and two straight up and and against the spread. And the last thing I'll say, I really think we 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 haven't seen the full extent of the the Carolina Panthers run defense getting destroyed. I I again DJ and prop uh, we're gonna throw out some names here. Hashtag Dejan Zoli. Tune into the pregame Periscope because I'll, I'll definitely have some. But Latavius Murray has an opportunity to have a big game. I hear everything you're saying about the checkdowns to Kamara, but I think this game could be about them coming out and lining up and just power running the ball. Down well, he Carolina's does throat. randomly have like a two touchdown game, and maybe this is the game for him. I also think Michael Thomas back on the field is going to help the running game. So I'm all around. I think this uh, this is one of the games where. I think you run to the window to get this into a teaser. Yeah. Next up, another early slot. Cleveland coming off the, the slot. disastrous the slot. Disastrous blowout. Would have been a close your eyes special here, Sean, but mm. they are the favorite. They're heading to Cincinnati, where Cincinnati, a three and a half point home dog, plus one fifty five on the money line, minus one seventy five for the Browns. Fifty and a half is the total. Uh I think last week, and I'll let you get to your points. I think last week we saw Cleveland play a team that was never going to be good for Cleveland's offense. And, and now the situation's completely different. I don't love the idea of taking Baker and this, this Browns team as a road favorite, but this game very early in the week seemed obvious to me that we yeah, saw I Cincinnati mean they- perform at a high level. Cleveland just got rocked. Just the convergence of that. We're going to get a buy low price. Yeah, no, I mean, Cincinnati, everyone's like, oh man, they almost beat uh, the Colts. Now, interesting note here Joe Mixon left, banged up. He came back in, so people think he's okay. But we're taping this on a Wednesday and he didn't practice. So I I think that's a bit of a red flag. He really opens up their offense. But again, Cincinnati, horrible against the run. And that's what gets the Cleveland offense going. You, why did they destroy the Cowboys? Well, hey, the Cowboys defense is horrific, but they were able to get the running game going. Bengals are letting up 5.1 yards per carry, 142.3 yards per game. And shout out to moon off for putting together these uh, cool cheat sheets. You can get those over at sports gambling podcast.com. But I think Nick Chubb just has a, or sorry, uh, Kareem hunt just has a massive day. I mean, we're talking 25 carries 125 plus agreed. I, I think they just pound the rock, really limit Cincinnati's possessions. So if you had to pick one Kareem Hunt prop, would you take over receptions, receiving yards, or rushing yards? I would take rushing yards. I, I think they're not going to let Baker fuck this up. They're just going to give it to Cincinnati. And the Browns, they're actually okay against the spread as road favorites. It doesn't happen very often, they're, but they're eight and five against the spread as road favorites. A couple interesting quotes coming out of Cleveland. Baker Mayfield said that the loss, quote, Four and two never felt so much like zero and six. So I, I think they're going to be up for this game. I think they got embarrassed by Pittsburgh. Odell Beckham Jr. very odd COVID uh, quote, uh, saying that he doesn't think COVID is quote going to enter his body. It's a mutual respect. He said he doesn't want any part of COVID, and COVID doesn't want any part of him. It seems like a shit metaphor. <laughs> Uh, if I want to, what another nugget, Sean? Uh, I don't know. Did you have more quotes about Odell and no? And I just felt like we had to talk about that. Uh, B- Baker, we would. I think everyone would agree. Oh, and real quick, those cheat sheets from those sheets from Munaf. Uh, yes. If you want to really convince uh, the better ha- the other half of you that like this is a real thing that that is work like, print those sheets out and just start making notes on it. Just sit down and say you're you're in the lab doing work. They're like, "Wow, that's a wa- how many pages?" Well, holy and, shit. And, and also a lot of people use Slack at work. So, um perfect time to join our Slack. Just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com/slack yeah. and then when you have the laptop out on a Saturday <laughs> watching college football and your wife's going like, "What are you uh, Oh, you're just messing around." Like, "No, look, I'm on Slack. I'm communicating yeah. with my coworkers." Collaborating. Little does she know Hashtag Dejan's only is in full storm. Yeah, you're you're you, it, you're sharpening the spear. Crowdsourcing makes all the data better. Sean Baker Mayfield, <laughs> uh, we all agree, not good against pressure. No, just got his ass kicked against a team that puts pressure on quarterbacks better than anyone in the NFL. Number one uh, in pressure rate, according to the Pro Football Reference, Pittsburgh Steelers. Guess where Cincinnati falls on that that ranking? They got to be towards twenty ninth. Yeah. So whether or not you like Baker to not fuck this game, I think Baker has opportunity. I think Baker Jarvis Landry is a fun way to, if we're playing every quarterback, we had discussed this. 
I think the uh, Baker Jarvis Landry is might be a fun way to play Cleveland. Uh, I I just I love the discounted price we're getting, and I think, you know, I, I saw a, no, a note intended air yards. Sean, do you know what that is? No, that just counts your intent, like any pass intended air, air yards. Burrow is doing very well in that, but an actual air yards very horrible. What does that tell you? No idea. It's just not a good downfield passer yet. Yeah. And so if he, if he, he's not going to be a good downfield passer, I don't think that works well against this defense, especially if they're down two touchdowns. No, and Miles and Kareem Garrett, Hunt is just eating the clock. Miles Garrett against this offensive line. I mean, they never really had a chance against mm. Pittsburgh because of the turnovers, but I think they give Baker a very simple game plan. It's dude, just hand the ball off to Kareem Hunt. That's yeah. all you have to do. Don't fuck this up. Feeling chalky in here, Sean. Next Who cares? Up, Dallas coming off Monday night football where they got their ass beat. They are well, by the way, McCarthy said thought it was the best best preparation of the year. <laughs> Why would quote. you say that? Then direct you're quote. just pointing out your preparation gets great preparation gets your ass kicked. What a horrible message to send to the team. Dallas heads to Washington to take on the football team. They were plus four and a half on the look ahead now, Sean. And, and wow. And they're a pick 'em now. Forty six is the total. And you know how many bets I have uh, as we stand today? I've put in two bets. One of them is on this Washington team. Nice. I was able to get it plus three. I see it pick them now. I would run to the window and bet it right now because what I see, I don't. This is another one. The sharps are going to be like, well, look at all the value on Dallas here. Andy Dalton, not a bad quarterback. Mike McCarthy's got to be getting fired up. I think I'm doing my RJ Bell impression. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess the case for Dallas is what is the case? Zeke, Zeke fumbled twice. That's not going to happen Zeke's again. Out. He's checked out. He he's really got a, is. He's got a twitch career to worry about. <laughs> what, what, I mean, the wide receivers, Kevin Durant didn't. He hasn't turned this team into the fucking Golden State Warriors. What's going on, CD Lamb? Well, and and the Washington defensive line against this Dallas offensive line is oh. a huge mismatch. Zach Martin. Uh, even the latest, a victim of the Cowboys offensive when he line. He went curse. down. I was just like. Mwah. And he's he's in the concussion protocol, which on a short week Lineman. traveling on the road, it, it's not going to. I happen. did a little work on this one, Sean. Very very. I think I've only I've only found a couple cases where a lineman came back after a week. Yeah, well, and then if it's a shorter week, and then uh, it's really hard to clear it if you're going on a road game because there's one day of travel. <laughs> From and they what can't I can really tell, and I wonder if there's some sort of like cognitive ability uh, matrix that we need to be looking at. But from what I can tell, if you're a defensive back. You're a wide receiver, or you're a quarterback. You only need like a couple of days to get come back from a concussion. Yeah. If you're a lineman, a linebacker, or a running back, you probably need two to three weeks. <laughs> it is weird. I, well, I think those guys hit harder, but yeah, maybe maybe something to maybe that, their though. brains weren't weren't amazing to begin with, and that's always interesting when measuring concussions. It's like these guys weren't rocket well, scientists to begin you, with. Well, yeah, that's the thing. If you know anything about the baseline test, it's all ab- it's all about measuring against your normal intelligence. <laughs> So may, maybe the smarter you are, the shorter you need to come back from a con- I don't know. But anyway. ter- Terry McLaurin, we highlighted him on the DFS oh. podcast. He should have a great game. Juicy match. And this is a great nugget from our uh, pal over at Walter Football. Oh, love that guy. Teams that lose by 17 plus on Monday Night Football are 35 and 55 against the spread since 2002. So normally you like to take the idea of like, wow, they lost by a ton. Uh, they're going to figure it out and the, the value is going to be uh, there for them. But the fact that they lost by a ton and they're on a short week, they have limited time to uh, able to fix it. And maybe that works in Mike McCarthy's uh, that works for Mike McCarthy. The fact that he has limited time to fix it actually helps him because clearly, like you said, great preparation equals horrific results. I, I don't know. I really like that nugget. And uh, oh, so I actually missed that. They they're also they would be a, if they become a dog, they would be a closure eye special. Yeah. Now here here's what I'll say. Now that it's back to a pick 'em, if you are smart, you just wait. The Cowboys fans will bet this. Yeah. This will this you will get Washington plus two and a half on Sunday. I think I think Sharps will also come in on Dallas because they'll see all the talent. They'll see the town <laughs> and they'll see what Mike McCarthy did before. I just think Andy and the, the real, what I'm fading here, Andy Dalton went from being a very savvy backup pick by the Cowboys to he's just not an NFL quarterback anymore. He looked really bad. Yeah. If they I, blitzed him, he went down and they brought the house. And I think if you're, if you're on Rivera, they, they laid out a really good game plan. It's like, just bring pressure from cornerbacks, defensive backs, and he's just not going to be able to handle it. 
Well, and and now they're facing the the best defensive line in the division. So, all right, Sean. Next up, Detroit. They head down to Atlanta to take on the Falcons. The new look Falcons. Everyone's saying the Falcons are back. Why didn't they make this coaching change sooner? Raheem Moore, he's got it together. Uh, Falcons minus two and a half, minus one thirty-five on the money line. Lions plus one fifteen, fifty-five and a half is the total. Talk about a a a. a both, if this was March Madness, we would say both of these teams are bet against teams in this spot. Atlanta coming off a big win, Detroit coming off a big win. Well, Atlanta coming off a win, but I, I mean, I'm sure you're talking, you're going to talk yourself into the Lions, Ryan. I'll let you do that. Just some stuff I want to throw out for the Atlanta heads. First off, Falcons run defense quietly okay. They're yeah. actually fifth in rush defense, 97.2 yards per game and 81.3 yards per game in their last three. I mean, Minnesota's game plan against the Falcons was, Hey, we want to pound the rock with Madison. And uh, you know, that's how we're going to establish the run and get things going. And they just never were able to do that. Atlanta's defense played pretty well. And, and Atlanta's passing offense was able to exploit the banged up and young inexperienced Viking secondary. And I think Atlanta can do that again against Detroit. Now uh, Gardner Minshew wasn't able to do that. They they have some O line issues. They just have some issues altogether. But Desmond Trufant still not practicing for the Lions, and I think they're going to have trouble guarding Julio Jones and uh, Ridley. I, I really think they do. Or they are, and it's a back to back road spot for yep. Detroit. But again, the biggest trend in the favor of the Falcons: Detroit coming off a win. Matt Patricia has coached thirty seven games and only once. In that 37 stretch, has he won two in a row? Give me the Falcons minus two and a half. You said a lot of great nu- nuggets. Of Thank you. Only to support your case. What you left out was Atlanta 30th uh, against the pass on defense, and Detroit actually pretty good against the pass this year, unlike that Minnesota team. So, where I agree with you, I think if if they watch the tape in Detroit, they're going to see, hey, maybe this isn't the game to hand the ball to Swift and Peterson. Maybe this is the, the game to let Matty Stafford loose and Matt Stafford greater than Kirk Cousins. You think that's the kind of stuff going on in Patricia's head? Adjusting uh, things? I, I getting away from running the ball? Look, the look ahead had Detroit as a road favorite. Atlanta got a win. And I, I don't want to throw some of your own medicine back at you, but this feels like you're making you, you, this feels like a random game where you stepped off the gut handicapping train and you went to go look at some data. Uh, the last thing I'll give no, you, my my gut is telling me Matt Patricia can't win to, two games in a row. What I'll line you up I, with, I looked it up to solidify it, but girl, yeah. girl, what I did, what I would say is, since the DFS show, I, as we dive in deeper, Gurley is an intriguing play. Yeah, uh, it it does seem like a good matchup, but of course I'm going to take my Lions. I I do have a ticket <laughs> on them to make the playoff, Sean. So I'm best I'm, of luck. I'm all in. Well, and who knows with that 17th, maybe they pull it out. But I uh, I would just say be careful with this Atlanta team. Like you saw them. In hindsight, even though we were both on the Vikings, we just watched Atlanta play a perfect game. Yep. And they beat a bad Vikings team. So Yeah, no, I, I agreed with your opening statement of both these teams I'm looking to fade. Unfortunately, we have to pick one. So take and two. and Atlanta is the way to go here. Take the home team. What do they say? Take the two and a half, lay the three and a half. Next up, Green Bay. Another team that would be a close your eyes special, Sean. I don't wow. know if we've ever said that about the Green Bay Packers before. I'll have to go back into the database. They head to Houston, where they are a four-point favorite. Green Bay minus not one ninety-five on the money line. Houston plus one sixty-five. Fifty-seven is the total. Uh, this is another one of those games. I think on the uh, on the absolute front line of the sharp versus square battle, because I would imagine so many of the sharps are going to be talking about how this is the this is the time to bet on Houston as a home dog. This is this is a good value. You're going to see a good positive. Uh, they can run the ball. They're going to be able to man- manage the clock. And fu- Aaron Rodgers is pissed. Yeah, you, this is so easy. Aaron Rodgers, thirty and fifteen against the spread after a loss. I, I think he's going to be fired up. I mean, since he did that, weird was that, was that a, a straight up sp- uh, against the spread? What was the number you gave? Him? Thirty and fifteen. Oh, I, you can expand that even further. Okay. Forty, twenty-one, and one. All right. Either so. way, it's a it's a strong trend of him coming back after a bad game. And I mean, listen, they got out to that ten nothing lead. They took the foot off the gas and they got their ass kicked. It was it, since he did that weird like 
I don't know what he was going for. The key and peel, like weird uh, Hulkamaniac or I, How's I don't know. My dick taste. Very odd celebration that Tampa Bay just lit him up going uh 38 and zero. But I, I, this Houston team doesn't have that defense that uh Tampa Bay has. And I think, I, I think they're really going to struggle with Aaron Jones. I think Devonte Adams one more week back a little bit healthier. Who can, who can cover Devonte Adams and Houston? We haven't seen a ton of these in the NFL so far, but wasn't that their dream crusher game? They they get that first win with Romeo Cornell. Then they have a division game in Tennessee. They they're poised to to win the game. They don't they go for the two point. They don't get it. Then they I mean you saw Deshaun Watson as soon as Tennessee won the coin toss. He was like, "That's it. We lost the game." That's got to take uh, something to your yep. mental. That's got to hurt your motivation. And then Just Romeo coming Cornell, off overtime in general. Yeah, you played. You and you had to tackle uh, Derrick Henry for more than sixty minutes. That's got to wear you down. It was kind of an exhausting game. Where Green Bay, I mean, they just got, they got pushed around on defense. I don't think the offense was really that tired. And it was a strange spot. I mean, I think even though they were coming off the bye week, they they were headed to Tampa, who was in a very positive situation. And oh, by the way, an elite defense. Houston, not an elite defense. That 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 to me is the big difference. Here is. And I, the other thing I'd say, I think you throw out the, the notion of a non-conference road game. I think we're getting closer to that, at least in COVID times where I don't know if that matters. I don't know if that matters. I don't know if, if teams are just paying more attention well, yeah, to every in, game in general, with- in general, I think I'm, um, you know, it's not an exact science, but when it comes to home field, I'm not just giving them the blanket three. Yeah, and so I guess I guess we're both on Green Bay here. There's not much to add other than it does, right? Isn't this the game that everyone gets too cute? Because once again, much like our position on the Bills and some of these other spots, it feels like we're going to be on the popular side. You want to have some fun with numbers? I didn't give this out. I, I forgot to throw out the stat. Where Redskins only getting forty percent of the tickets, but eighty-one percent of the money. Sharps, our fellow Sharps, all over the skins, Ryan. That's, uh, sorry, the football team. Uh, but I think the troubling thing about this week is is the percentages are leading leaning in the way that we're picking right now, and that that's it's maybe, not maybe scary. Not troubling at all. I'm on a heater, Ryan. I don't know. Last if you've of the early games, Pittsburgh can't had, can't question myself. Just Pittsburgh. have to rely on the gut. Hope for the best. Pittsburgh heads to Tennessee, where the Titans are laying a point minus one fifteen on a mon- on the money line. Pittsburgh minus one hundred five. Fifty and a half is the total. I mean, go, go, Sean. Tell, tell me why anyone, why is Tennessee favored? Well, I, I was going to say, five and oh. yeah, I was going to say you could make a case that Tennessee, right. Tennessee should be minus three. I, I think this is a little bit low. I, I'm worried about big Ben going on the road. We've seen road, big Ben. It hasn't been good, um, but I think matchup wise. And of course there's a couple of big injuries. Devin Bush out for the season for the Steelers. Uh, Titans left tackle Taylor. He's out for the season. I think that really matters when you get um, TJ Watt going in there and Bud Dupree, uh, some outside pass rushers. I, I think this is an interesting spot for Tennessee. Like they just seem to rally, and I, and I always kick myself for fading this Tennessee team. But they kind of had a miracle win. They had a miracle cover. I think this is a perfect game for them to lose. And matchup wise. I just like the Pittsburgh pass catching offense against this Tennessee secondary. You saw what Cooks did. You saw what Fuller did. Like Deshaun Watson made a ton of plays, and you know Big Ben wasn't coming off a huge game against the Browns, but he didn't really need to throw the ball all around. Like with the turnovers, defensive touchdowns, they were pretty much able to take care of things. And uh, yeah, I don't know if Derrick Henry can just have another massive game to carry this Tennessee team. They kind of pulled that one out of their ass. I'm going Steelers here, but. I'm scared of this game for sure. I, I think the problem is Derrick Henry won't get going because this is the number one rush defense according yeah. to DVOA. And, and we'll I think see how it is without Devin Bush, but they should still be pretty solid. The Bush thing scares me. I, I I trust that Pittsburgh will be prepared, but when I look at this matchup, I I can't help but yes, Tennessee's coming off overtime. But when you look at when when you look at who this Titans team has played, and you look at how good. Uh, they rank in whatever defensive metric you want to use, Sean. Uh, they played the Broncos, the Vikings, the Jags, the Bills, the Texans. Yeah. Uh, are you any dominant defenses there? Broncos, maybe. Yeah, I mean this Titans season. That was week one, and that was their 
That was a super close game. Titan season is all over the place. And just one last nugget, Ryan, you are the kicking expert for the sports gambling podcast. Specials. When it comes to K props, you know the K metric, and you got your K props. I mean, Gostowski, they're still trotting this guy out there. Uh, I, I don't. I mean, he missed some big kicks in that in that game. Luckily, it didn't matter for them. But on a spread this small, I'm gonna I'm gonna go against the team with a horrific kicker. Yeah, I mean, the reason you're worried is Pittsburgh. Who do they have on deck? Baltimore. Yeah, they could be looking ahead. But I. But I. I, I don't think you can when you're playing an undefeated Titans team. I, I think there's also we haven't discussed it, but there also could be a situation here where Pittsburgh's just like fuck you, Tennessee, fucking up our schedule because you can't fucking not have your. He did seem pissed off by that Big Ben. He said, "This is it's really frustrating. I was just getting in a rhythm." I guarantee that's something Tomlin talks about. Well, and, look, let's show these guys it's not okay to fuck with the you know don't fuck with the shit. And Chase Claypool, like, I mean, he's been resurgent in these or resurgent. I don't know, emergent, whatever the word is. He's just been scoring a bunch of fucking touchdowns. It's a bad man. And I, I, I'm definitely getting a piece of him in DFS against this Titans defense run. Oh yeah, you know what else I'm getting a piece of? The action over at Ace per head. That's right. Now is the time to sign up for your own sports book. Start your own sports book. All you got to do head to aceperhead.com slash SGP. Aceperhead.com slash SGP. Sign up using our link and you get up to six weeks free. That's right. Six weeks of their amazing sports book software completely free. Ace, they got it all. They offer live betting, an amazing mobile experience. Again, you don't have to come up with the gambling lines. They do that for you. They cover all the sports, esports. They got an online casino. They do it all. All you got to do is go to acebread.com slash SGP. Acebread.com slash SGP. Sign up there. Ace is the place if you want to start your own sports book. Ryan, I missed it earlier, but you snuck a Plaxico Burris, a photo of Plaxico Burris up in the studio screen. Perfect, uh, perfect way to uh, remember how the Giants they were they had an amazing season, and then Plaxico shot himself and uh, derailed what could have been a great season for you guys. And not only that, I rem- I still have a vivid memory of watching that game uh, in the Burbank house. And the walk off touchdown happened. And you, I, I don't know if you, you punched a door or you, you may have threw a plastic deck chair. Something happened. But uh, also a great transition to uh, my comedy album coming out. You can pre order it now. It's called This Loss Hurts Us All. Again, it's something my dad yelled out uh, after a, uh, it was in a party bus uh, coming back from a horrific loss to the Arizona Cardinals on national television. It was the debut of David Johnson. Basically, everyone's like, oh my God, this guy's amazing. Uh, everyone wanted Chip Kelly fired, and he eventually was. So, a lot of fun stories like that. A uh, couple other tracks: the jail at Eagle Stadium, Philly Hot Yoga. I have to get Lenny Dykstra's five hundred dollars. If you remember Lenny Dykstra's appearance on the Sports Gambling Podcast, it's a little behind the scenes story there. But all you got to do go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Sean, pre-order it, and then take a little screenshot, email it in to podcast at sportsgamblingpodcast.com. Podcast at sports gambling podcast.com. Send in that screenshot to help uh, help it debut number one on the charts or give it a good debut on the charts. And uh, we're going to pick a random winner, give them a hundred bucks, a SGP hoodie, and a chance to give out a lock dog tease on air. You get it all, Ryan. Good news. Uh, my mom uh, pre ordered it, was curious if, oh, she, wow. if she had to email in a screenshot. <laughs> No, you don't have said, to. No, 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 if you not, don't want to not. participate in the contest, I noticed some people tweeting in the screenshots. Listen, just make it easy on us. Email it in podcast at sports gambling podcast.com. All right, Sean. Let's head to the afternoon slate where we have uh, thank you, NFL. I think maybe is in order. They they listened to us last yep. week. Four games, four TVs, perfect formula. Perfect symmetry. The Seattle Seahawks coming off their bye. They head to Arizona, who's coming off Monday night football. Seattle is a three and a half point favorite, minus 180 on the money line. That money line seems a bit sh- short. Plus 160 for the Cardinals. 56 is the total. Kyler looked pretty fucking good. Boy, yeah. that team, they they just, you see the, did you see the Cardinals? They blew out the Unlimited. Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys, they're good. The Cardinals blow that, blew them out. They must be good. And they're a home dog, Sean. Yeah. Holy Toledo. 
This one's interesting. I mean, I'm all over Seattle here. Obviously, I'm going to keep riding the Seattle team uh, on as a short favorite, unless it gets super inflated. I mean, obviously, Seattle's defense is a concern. There's some hope that Jamal Adams plays. Obviously, if he does, I like them even more. But I think Kai God could struggle. I don't a think he's going to play. Right? Isn't that why they made they brought Randall onto the active roster? I, I'm saying I there's an outside shot he plays, but unlikely he plays. Well, but again, Arizona stock couldn't be more inflated. I think dude, no I, one it, on Arizona's defense can guard DK Metcalf. I just don't think they can. You know, Patrick Peterson would probably disagree with that statement, but I, I don't think I. He, but I would love as a guy who's playing DK Metcalf in DFS. Please put Patrick Peterson on him. He will dominate Patrick Peterson, like Russell Wilson said. He he's comparing DK Metcalf to Jerry fucking Rice. So I I'm all in on that. It's interesting. There's a huge rest disparity, though. That's kind of an interesting thing because uh, Arizona played on Monday night and Seattle coming off a bye, so a giant rest disparity. Little nugget here: teams coming off Monday night games are actually 33 and 15 against the spread versus opponents off buys. So I think that's that whole rest versus rust, and maybe, um, maybe that kind of throws the team coming off. But they say rest versus rust. But what about rest? Versus Russ Ryan, Mister Unlimited. Unlimited. This guy is using that extra time. They've been working together. Like they're di- this Seattle team's dialed in, and there's there's talk that they maybe uh, talks about getting Antonio Brown. Which uh, don't don't bring that guy into this team, and especially considering I have so many shares of DK Metcalf. Please do not do that. But I, I love Seattle here, Arizona. Again, I, I think this could be a little Cliff Kitchens game. The three and a half is a hair scary. The Capra Cup actually has it at three, Ryan. But uh, three and a half is a hair scary because these these division games get a little wonky, especially between Seattle and Arizona. But uh, another last nugget: I think Russell Wilson's like ten and five or, or something crazy like that uh, against the spread in division opponents' first game, something like that. Whatever it is, he does really well against a division opponent the first time around against the spread. He does really well against uh, all opponents. Yeah, that's, against that's, all spreads. Uh, if you look at uh, just in general, uh, last let's let's look at the the Kyler experiment versus Seattle. Um, Seattle, if you remember, they did win, but that was in Seattle. And when we had the uh, I don't I'm blanking on his name, Sean, but we had the Seattle uh, beat right uh, beat re- reporter call in for the NFC West preview. He mentioned he called that out specifically when he got to this game. He said, "No, Seattle's going to win in Arizona. Arizona's going to give us trouble." Yeah, at home. it's it's one of those things where the road team somehow does better every year. Uh, you mentioned stock, and I heard shares. You must have known that Michael Kendricks has been signed to the practice <laughs> squad. He's still insider is a, trading. He's still awaiting his sentencing on insider trading. So I. Interesting. He can get signed to it. Look, I, there's not much to break down in this game other than I'm going to a, I would love to fade the Cardinals off that win. Yep. And B uh, yeah, I'll take Seattle off a buy. Uh, I like everything you said. And, and mostly I like the, uh, you know, where rest disparity matters. I think I'm going to really lean into it. I did that last week. I seem to be dialed into when to fade it as well. I faded the Packers. So I think this is a spot you take it, you run with it. I think this Seattle offense could look really fun on this fast turf down in Arizona. Next up, Jacksonville heads to the Los Angeles chargers where they're coming off a buy minus seven on the look ahead, Sean, all the way up to minus seven and a half minus three sixty on the money line. Jacksonville plus 349 is the total. Uh, I mean, I'll go first and tell me all the reasons why you're scared to take this chargers team. Uh yeah, I mean it's the Chargers. The, even when they look really good, uh, they still figure out ways to lose. I mean it's the Chargers, right? San Diego Super Chargers. Charge. Lambo back? Is that why you're stoked about the kicker? The return? They're not well, they're trotting out that uh, that Cisco lookalike for, for kicker anymore. Jags are getting a Josh Allen back, which is a huge part of their defense. But the, even with Josh Allen back, the Jags defense has been horrific. They've only forced eleven punts all season. That's insane. And I think there is a chance that Minshew backdoors this thing. But to me, really, it, Herbert, I, I think he's just going to ball out against this Jacksonville secondary. He um, might be good. He might be good. And the Jags, on the other side of the ball, the Jags dealing with some offensive line issues. They lost their guard uh, during that game against the Lions that yeah. allowed the Lions to get some pressure. And they couldn't really take advantage of the uh, banged up Lions cornerbacks. 
Chargers are going to be getting Melvin Ingram back. So you get Melvin Ingram and Joey Bosa against a suspect Jags offensive line going from the East Coast to the West Coast. I think that's it's a tough formula for this Jags team. Tell me again up. why this isn't a good survivor pick. Oh, because the Chargers will figure out a way to lose the game, but I'll take I'll take the Chargers laying seven and a Sean, half. At some point we have to open our eyes and see that the Jags, they're not a good team. They're bad. I they get had, it. They they won that week. They this is all off of that win week one. Yeah. And perhaps you can remain, but we can remain behind it. But when the lions beat you by more than two touchdowns, the Texans beat you by more than two touchdowns, the Bengals beat you by almost two touchdowns and the dolphins beat you by more than two touchdowns in four straight weeks. I'm happy to only have to lay seven and a half with a chargers team. That's pretty fucking good. Yeah. But also they they've only won one game. The Chargers, like they figure out ways to lose in spite of the fact of being really good. So that's what scares me away in a survivor contest. I'll take the Chargers minus seven and a half, but they still have Anthony Lynn. You know, they still have the ability to choke away um, amazing opportunities. They still have a, a, an ability to miss game winning field goals. Like all that is all on right. the table for the Chargers. All right. I, I I think I think you might be over and guess what? Another public side. So I at some point we're gonna get burnt. It feels like we're on the popular side of all of these. And and generally it doesn't work that way. Although who knows the uh, the sports books have been doing pretty well with all that extra sharp money in their pocket. <laughs> Next up, Sean, Kansas City coming off Monday night. They head to Denver. Big, massive win for Denver. It feels like even though Peyton and Tom Brady aren't still there, Denver, New England is like some strange out of division rivalry. Denver is a nine and a half point home dog, three forty five on the money line. Kansas City minus four thirty. Forty six is the total, Sean. And uh, write this down. We have snow in the forecast. Ooh, I like it. 20 degrees. Uh gonna feel like 10 and it's gonna be snowing. That doesn't feel like a uh the kind of game that Patrick Mahomes is really Yep, now I can already see our boy uh Kansas City Alex firing up a tweet pointing I, out that they He does chirp a lot after positive <laughs> things. Seems to disappear after negative things. Yeah, we didn't hear anything after the uh, the Raiders loss, but I think he would probably point out uh, when was it the? Uh, I mean, last time they played in Denver, they beat them thirty to six last year, and then even at home, twenty three to three, and that was in snow in Kansas City. So I, I think that would be Alex's angle. If I isn't guess. this one of the? So I know it's it's fine to say there is no such thing as home field advantage this year. Denver, I think, still has some form of home field advantage. This is a back to back road spot and why maybe why it matters a bit more. Elevation plus travel. Yeah. A uh, back to back road spot for Kansas City, but uh, you know, to your point on the flip side. Yeah. They, they just crushed their division. 13 uh, and 3 against the spread in the AFC West on the road uh, in their last 16. That's, that's ridiculous. Insane. 14 and 1 straight up. Yeah, I think I think this Denver team catching double digits or near double digits, I got to take and I hate going against Kansas City, but um, Denver, they get Noah Fant back. Um, Kansas City's really having some offensive line issues, and I think that's going to slow down. I mean, you didn't see it from this Bills defense because the Bills, I mean, they they sat a bunch of defensive starters. Like the well, Bills the defense th is kind of in a weird transition spot, but Denver, I mean, that defense played really well against a team with offensive line issues in the New England Patriots. So I think they're going to play. I think the D line is going to carry them in the Broncos at home as home Cam, underdogs. Cam is not Patrick Mahomes. No, first of all. no, that's uh, certainly worth pointing out, what, but now they're at home and they're still catching 10 points. What? Yeah. What is the takeaway? What is the real takeaway from their performance against new England? Was it purely just, they, they knew how to stop that very one dimensional offense. I think their defense isn't that bad. And uh, I mean, there were a couple drops that Drew Locke had, and and otherwise he would have had a much bigger game. He's getting his safety blanket back. It looks like in Noah Fant, which I think will really help the offense. Like a guy like Drew Locke needs his needs Noah Fant just to kind of keep the uh, you know keep the sticks moving. A nice safety blanket there they, over the middle. And Gordon should be playing again unless he's still yes. hung over or, or sorry strep throat strep throat totally totally not uh, anything to do with his DUI he had strep throat so now this 27th can I just want to throw this out Kansas City fourth against the pass 27th against the run DVOA yeah 
will this Denver team be able to run the rock? Cause that to me, when I break this game down, that is the, that, that is it. That is a hundred percent of this. If they can run the rock and we saw Lindsay go for a hundred last week, we know Gordon's going to come back. I, I think they can do it. And I think, yeah, I think what they can do is slow the game down enough to cover the spread. Um, I, I still think you're going to see a bunch of people putting the chiefs in their survivor here. Cause I, I do like them to probably win the game, but the number is a little big for a division. And I know, I know chiefs are dominant against the spread in the division, but I think with the weather, with their ability to run the ball and the short rest and the back to back, I think Denver is able to slow it down. So give me Denver plus nine. Last and nugget that I wrote down. Denver is a pretty big upgrade over Buffalo in terms of rushing attacks. As surprising as that is, Buffalo number thirty-two in the country. Yeah, and Singletary league, just hasn't been able to get much done. So, uh, in hindsight, I wish I had uh, gone deeper into that matchup because the Buffalo Kansas Buffalo's profile lines up perfectly for Kansas City's defense. Where I don't, even though Denver's offense is worse overall, I do think there's opportunity here and. and sh- I was very surprised to see how many people are like, no, lay it, lay the points, grab it quick. Denver's off a win. People are going to be. That's true. But I, I did. I mean, the fact that it's still 10, is it real or nine and a half? Are they really giving Denver any credit for beating that new England team? Probably not. I mean, I guess not, not enough. Uh, who does, who does Denver have or Kansas city have next week? They're not uh, looking ahead to the jets. <laughs> Definitely not looking ahead to the Jets. That that look ahead line is twenty one points. That's insane. Remember uh, when the Patriots were winning all their games? That's what we were seeing back then. Yeah, and uh, I remember the Eagles were seventeen point dogs and almost won outright against. They, them. Was it them or the Ravens the first team to cover the big spread? Oh, Eagles covered. I remember no, I know, that. But it was them or the Ravens that were like the first team to like start. Where, where it was like the point spread just kept going higher 10, 13, 16, 19. Next thing you know, there's three touchdown spreads. Anyway, back to. So we're both on Denver? Yep. This is going to be the game we look like. They're going to be down two touchdowns in the first half with no chance to catch up. I, I like it though, because I, I think their offensive numbers are depressed because Drew Locke has missed a bunch of time. San Francisco, Sean, they head to New England. Where the Patriots were five and a half on the look ahead. They lost outright to the Broncos. Belichick, I think, is on a two game losing streak. When's the last time that <laughs> happened? Patriots minus two, minus 125 on the money line. Niners one oh, plus 105. 43 and a half is the total. Uh, I mean, in my research for the fantasy show, I, I realized that Cam Newton is going to have a. San Francisco has given up yards on the ground of the quarterback. Yeah. Cam I mean, Newton's that's, that's kind of what jump started. The Eagles when Wentz started rushing uh, against them in that game, I think cam rushing, it, they're going to be able to get that done. No Mostert, I think he's their kind of dynamic playmaker. And I think if anyone can figure out a way to stop George Kittle, it might be bill Belichick and bill Belichick with a losing record, like it, six games into the season, five games into the season. He doesn't seem like a guy who's going to put up with that bullshit. So I think New England is going to come out fired up, dialed in. Belichick again, twenty nine and fourteen against the spread after losing as a favorite. I, I think it's a real bounce back opportunity for this New England team, and I'm still not buying San Francisco. I, in hindsight, that was a perfect spot for San Francisco, and I had it for a little while, and then I at the last second bailed and took the Rams. It was the classic close your eyes special. Yeah, but uh, I, I think flying all the way out to New England, that's just going to be. A, that's brutal. It's a baby fucking wheel, man. Yeah, I mean, I think you you kind of nailed it. You you said what you needed to say. You just didn't say. It. Bill Belichick will take Kittle out of the game because Kittle's the most important. Now that they don't have a rushing attack, I mean, sure, Hasty looked scrappy. He looked like a guy. You know, honestly, he looks like the kind of guy who's going to play for a half and get hurt. Jarek McKinnon, he's never been more than a gadget guy. Kittle's the guy that makes that offense go, especially with Jimmy G back there. And Bill Belichick will 100% take him out of the game. Period. Yeah. That's just how he plays defense. So their offense is very one dimensional. When's the especially last, especially without most. Here's my question. When's the last time Belichick was less than a field goal favorite at home? Yeah. Because we're, we're now we're, we're walking up against like two decade long historical. Well, and, and he gets Cam Newton with a full week of practice. I mean, he was still coming back from COVID. Yeah. They were, de- they were shutting down the facility, opening it back up, I think. And they still have some offensive line issues, but I think they will be able to slow down San Francisco's defensive line with the full week of practice, be able to scheme something up for him. 
But yeah, I, I really like the Patriots minus two. We we agree on a lot this week, Sean. Sunday night football. Hey, you're copying my picks. <laughs> yeah. Sunday night football, the Bucks head to Las Vegas where the Raiders coming off the bye minus oh, I'm sorry. Tampa is minus two and a half on the look at minus three and a half now, Sean. I'm guessing some of the news that's broke has has caused this uh, to move. Minus one seventy on the money line. Raiders plus one fifty. Fifty three is the total. Uh, I'll share that news before we start. But the the Raiders uh, they placed offensive tackle Brown Trent Brown, who they fleeced uh, off the uh, off the Forty ers on the COVID list. Uh oh, your offensive lineman has COVID. Those guys are fucking nasty. They're all touching each other. So uh, what does Gruden do? He sends the whole team home, sends the whole offensive line home. So is there a possibility where they play this game with none of their starting offensive linemen? Sir, I mean, uh, I don't well, know. Well, if you get sent home and yeah. they're doing the contact tracing, those players have to have two negatives, right? Yeah. So we're now up again. We're, this is a situation you want to monitor because if these linemen cannot start testing negative soon, they won't be able to play. Yeah, I mean they have until Sunday, but it's certainly going to mess up the practice, and they've certainly have issues with their offensive line overall. Kansas City wasn't able to take advantage of it, but um, I think Tampa Bay's defense will. And just to a bigger point, this, these Raiders, these Las Vegas Raiders, they just beat the Chiefs, and then they have a week of just sitting around, smelling themselves, hanging out in Vegas. Some of them apparently catching COVID. I think I want to I want to fade them and I want to ride this Tampa Bay team that's kind of oh, I was going to say of all the teams and coaches and cities to not gain a benefit from a bye We got to get our shit going mentally. <laughs> yeah, I mean if you're in Vegas and you just beat the Chiefs, aren't you just out there living it up? Carr thinks he's amazing. I mean Tampa Bay, they I mean you watch that Chargers game and there were there were some opportunities there that they had with the deep ball and Herbert. So that's scary like maybe Rugs gets some on them but that Tampa Bay defense, and I don't think that was an outlier against the, uh, the Rodgers and the Packers. I think it's their defense is legitimately good. I think they're going to be able to handle them. And then the offensive line news that just tips the scale in the favor of uh, of the Bucks. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's just a motivation thing of like they're going to be smelling themselves. So yeah, give me Tampa Bay minus three and a half. It it, it it's not a great situation to take them off a big win. But do no. you think the line movement had more to do with just their overall slaughtering of the Packers and how good that defense looks, or do yeah. you think it has has a, a lot to do with this COVID news? Um, I don't know. I, it's probably a mix. It could just be skewing. Like, who's betting? On, you can't bet on the Raiders until you understand if their offensive line is going to be able to play. Yeah, I mean, you can't not have an entire off. Like, you need an well, offensive the entire line. starting line for the especially Raiders, especially if you're Derek Carr. He needs an offensive line. All right. Last game uh, Monday night, of course, because we have Baltimore, Indy, Miami, and the Vikings, who Sean would have been a closure eye special, all on by Monday night football. The Bears head to Los Angeles to take on the Rams. Rams are minus six, minus two. So wait, are you on Tampa Bay? I feel like you never yeah. said that. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Da oh one hundred. Are you kidding me? The entire offensive line isn't practicing. When I saw that news, yeah, you got to take Tampa Bay. Any, well, we, I think we already discussed early in the week why we liked taking, uh, without knowing the COVID news, why we like taking the Bucks. So yeah, I was leaning in there. Although, you know, if there's going to be one game of, of the week when you flip on Sunday Night Football, maybe you tune in a little bit late and and you see the Raiders are up ten nothing, <laughs> and Tom Brady's throwing a pick six, it's like fuck. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know the, the Raiders defense. There's still opportunities there. I just think this the Tampa's defense. Ta is Todd Bowles, into a really good defensive, defensive coordinator for the Bucks, is he's been coaching up a hell of a game or just uh, hell of a season so far. Yeah, another another case of someone who is right where they need to be, perfectly leveled. Sean Rams minus six, minus two sixty on the money line. Bears plus two twenty. Forty five is the total. I hate this. I hate this game. Oh, I love it. Give me the Bears plus six, all over Chicago here. Now you could talk yourself into saying, well, the Rams coming off a loss, they had a bunch of travel. Now they're coming back home. Chicago coming. This is going to be back to back road game for Chicago, but I watched the uh, Nick Foles post game conference. Uh -oh. They they're giving each other nicknames. Allen Robinson has a new nickname. It's called old fashioned. I don't know what it means. All I know is this Chicago it, team has mojo hand job without lube old fashioned. Okay. 
But well, they're all dick references, right? I, I guess I so. I only assume. I, I mean, you know, you got Long Cox, aka Nikki Six, and this is just a game the the Bears are going to be really competitive in. And you know, Jared Goff could be the new Kirk Cousins, where he gets that deer in the headlights look in prime time. When you're able to contact Jared Goff, you're able to create turnovers. That makes it a really long game for Jared Goff, and he doesn't want any part of it. And I think the Chicago Bears. Are you just trying to make a couple bucks on some uh, crooked Jared Goff sucks island speculation <laughs> right now? No, I mean, you're I, trying to tell people to sell because Ryan, you told me last week, you're like Jared Goff in prime time. And I'm like, yeah, Aaron Donald's going to carry the team. You were right, Ryan. You were right. I should have listened to time. you. No, it was, it was a Sunday night game. Are you talking about when they played the Niners? Yes. Last game. That was Sunday night football. You're right. Jesus. It is prime time. Jesus. So I'm fading golf in prime time. Nikki six comes up big. Nick Foles has had great success against the Rams defense. I think it continues Sunday night or sorry, Monday night. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if I can get aboard the, the, in this game. This game became troubling to me because just purely what the bears record has become. I, I watched this team and it's just like a guy. They just it's, find a way to a win. 400 pound man walking on bamboo stilts. Well, Ryan, it's the perfect squares versus sharps. The, the, uh, um, is it though? Yeah. Because all the analytical people will be like, wow, this is a historically bad five in one team. Meanwhile, you watch them and like, dude, the team wins. Like they're clearly playing for each other since Foles came in. They have some mojo. Allen Robinson is a nightmare to guard and they have a defense that just creates turnovers. They're getting they're getting all the bounces going their way. And you can either say like, Oh, this is going to eventually regress. And maybe it will down the season or in the playoffs. But right now this team is fucking hot. I'm all over the bears. Yeah. I guess it just comes down to, do you believe the bear? Do you believe the bears offense can do anything about this deep, this Rams defense? And I, I think in this case, I'm going to take I think the inflated wins is actually giving us a discount here. I I'm, I'm maybe we're talking about how I'm an idiot for taking Jared Goff in prime time. Yep. But I'm going to take Jared Goff in prime time. Enjoy it. Jared Goff. You just want to hear this the girls gone wild theme, Ryan. And you want it not to be associated with Odell. You know, what, give me the Bears. I, I don't <laughs> I don't have a good reason for it. It just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right that this Bears team should be this good. But you're right. Maybe Nick Foles is the man. No, they're just a team I'll that's winning games right now. Foles shows up in big games. He does, and this is a big game for them. I just don't have any data to how to help me support this because I think Aaron, right Aaron again, Donald's it's the, it's this. a perfect square versus sharp in the perfect square versus sharp season. Number one rush def, number one rush offense against a Bears defense that, if anything, that's their weakness. Ah, right, let's take the Bears. Fuck it. Let's yeah, do it. I'm all in, Ryan. I'm all in. Time for the lock dog tease presented by my bookie.ag. Promo code SGP20. Use that promo code and get a free $20 bet over at my bookie.ag. Kramer, kick things off. What's your lock dog and three team tees? Uh, I mean, there's a couple games that feel very lockable. Yeah. Uh, but I keep being pulled back to New England. Hmm. I, I just don't, I just don't get it. Uh, New England coming off back-to-back losses. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a stab at this one. I, I, I mean, I just don't understand why this isn't three, if not more. Jimmy G in a tight spot. This is gonna be a night game at Gillette. It's gonna be cold. I don't think I called this out, Sean. It's gonna be uh, s- scheduled kickoff. We- uh, temperature is 46 degrees. So uh, this just feels like the. Ca- the kind of game that they, they run their fucking option offense. They get it done. Uh, this was the first game that I, I bet this week. Honestly, I guess I have three bets. Then I uh, also have Washington, uh, the dog, Sean, I'm not going to take the giants. Don't worry. Uh, I'm going to take, I'm not worried. I don't have a ton of big dogs, but give me the, uh, give me Detroit. Uh, I think they win that walking away. And then for the tease, I told you to run and get new Orleans in there. Uh, I think we're going to join it with the chargers, even though you think, even though that's terrifying for you. And then I'm going to put the Steelers plus seven in there because Ooh. why the fuck not? So saints down to one chargers down to one and a half and Pittsburgh up to seven, Pittsburgh up to seven. All right. For my, it's kind of a, kind of intriguing here. 
Okay. For my, uh, yeah. Cause I really like, I really like the bears. Do I want to use them as my dog? That's the only thing that's concerning, Ryan, because I have limited, I have limited dog shelf life here because I like a lot of these small favorites. All right. You know what? I'll do it. I'm going to lock up Chicago plus six and uh, for my dog really a lock. Yes. Wow. Okay. For my dog. I mean, the only other dog I have that's not small is, uh, is Denver plus nine and a half. I mean, how big are your balls? All right. For that statement alone, give why me the you, Broncos. Why don't you take the bears as your dog? That's what you, you were called yeah, the outright way. Right. All right. I'll go, I'll go Chicago as the dog plus two twenty. We didn't talk about this before. And then I'll go. Uh, I do like green Bay a lot. Minus four. This is just a awesome bounce back opportunity. Green Bay minus four for the T's. Let's see. I, I like new Orleans minus one uh, pits. I mean, oh man, it'd be fun to tease Washington, but no need to do that. Oh, Buffalo down to uh seven and a half. A lot of key numbers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, who cares? Just toss them in there and count as a W and then uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, yeah. Pittsburgh up to seven. That's a good, that's a good tease as well. Copying you there. Kramer survivor. Well, I mean, we have, we, we it seems as though we have a, unless we want to get ballsy with like a Tampa or a green Bay angle, it seems like, or a Washington angle. It seems as though we have, we have a, a, a one horse race. Cause you, you're, you're not willing to take the chargers. No, we've already used Buffalo. Yep. In new Orleans Don't is new Orleans. The pick. Yeah. Is you always that, try and psych me out here at the end. What do you but, mean? I try to psych you out. I've been telling you it's New Orleans or the Chargers all week. Yeah. Okay. Then let's go with New Orleans. Well, I'm saying whenever we agree, it's like, yeah, let's do New Orleans. And you're like, are, is it the pick? It is the pick. I'm let's, just trying to. A little, it's it's called uh, drama. Okay. Making the, it dramatic. The pick is for the Circus Survivor, the New Orleans Saints, cap or cup. So let's put New England minus two in there. Green Bay minus four. Mm. I mean, well, we agree on a we we agree on a lot, uh, including those two. We, uh, based on the conversation and, and the tone of the conversation, I think we both really like Seattle, but we are somewhat concerned about that number. Well, it is three and a half in the Capper Cup, so it's three I say, or three and a half. I say we take it. It's three. three. Well, let's let's. It might be. It, yeah, it could be more in in other. Con- so let's let's. We like Pittsburgh a lot. Yeah. We like Cleveland well, a lot. Pittsburgh. I, I like Cleveland better than Pittsburgh. We like Washington. Uh, I don't want to put we Washington. Stay we want to stay I mean, we what like about, New Orleans laying the points, but we'd rather stay away from Why them. don't we put Chicago in there as well? We need that. Chicago's been working as our one dog. They were our one dog last week. Do we re- bring them back as our one dog, Kramer? Well, I think. I was going to leave the, 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 to me, the dog conversation. Well, we, we agreed on three dogs Pittsburgh. Denver and Chicago. Yeah. I mean, I'm fine taking Pittsburgh there too. All right. So Pittsburgh or Chicago becomes our dog. And then what, what are we laying? Are we taking Cleveland then? Yeah. And are we taking Tampa? No, new England, green Bay, new England minus two green Bay minus four Seattle minus three and a half Cleveland minus three and a half Pittsburgh plus one. And we can go with new England minus two as the double. They, they show up, I think at home. How does that sound? Lock it in. So we're going to do new England minus two. That's going to be our bonus pick. We're going to take green Bay. Double, minus yep. four. We're going to take Seattle minus three and a half Cleveland minus three and a half and Pittsburgh plus one. We're going to leave Chicago off. Yeah. I mean, you seem hesitant. I mean, I know they're going to cover, but whatever. It's not a big deal. I'm not hesitant. I'm Feels just saying like a good that the, the dog debate is between Pittsburgh. I'm fine. Taking Chicago over Pittsburgh. I thought we were going to be discussing Denver. No. Okay. If you like Chicago better as a dog, let's take Chicago because uh, I think right. we both, we both, Oh, now you want to put that on me, then leave it as Pittsburgh. No, no, I'm fine. I put Chicago plus six. Let's do it. New England minus two green Bay minus four Seattle minus three and a half Cleveland minus three and a half. Now just for the record, we've never changed last second. All right, then put Pittsburgh back in there. That's not, you're right. Bad. Let's keep the mojo and, and the, the same. Sh- the short dog has been working. It has. All right, everyone. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast. They won't be a dog on Sunday. I'll say that. Oh, well then good line value for the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green. Make sure you rate review 
And uh, every Monday, Merch Monday, giving away a uh, free shirt or hat to someone that has left a review for the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green, and he is Ryan. Go Giants. Go Eagles. Kramer. Let it ride.